Well, the U.S. government is on high alert that the conflict in Ukraine could spill into cyberspace and affect us here in the United States. Joining us now is Ahmed Banafa. He is a professor at San Jose State and an expert in this sort of thing. How worried should we be? Well, we, uh, worried is not the word that we should use as much as to be ready and to be to have our guards up because uh, we are uh, you know are on the list because we're helping uh, Ukraine big time. So we're going to be in the list of Russia if they're trying to do any kind of a cyber attack. Okay, what kind of targets are we looking at? Uh, we've heard the the banking system could be an obvious one, of course, because our sanctions have targeted their banking system. Oh, well, that's a good question. I mean, the infrastructure will be the first one. When you talk about the infrastructure, we have seen an example last year with the colonial pipeline shows that how it's really uh, affected 16 states. So we're talking about the the food supply, the gas supply, the banking system, as you, as you mentioned, uh, the transportation, the water supply, the sewage supply. Those are will be some of the targets if they want to create some panic here in the United States. Now, what about military targets? How vulnerable are those systems? Uh, the, uh, the, the government already, and I'm talking about the FBI, I'm talking about the Homeland Security, uh, CISA and NSA and Department of uh, you know, Homeland Security, they, all, they already warned the defense contractor and the defense company, companies that they know about it because uh, whatever we are doing here, the, the Russian uh, would like to know. Because if we supply Ukraine with any weapons, they would like to know what kind of weapon, how can they penetrate it and use uh, any kind of vulnerability there. Now, we've seen some recent cyber attacks and they've been blamed on Russia. Did we learn anything from that over the last couple of years? Uh, the uh, the Russian has their own way of dealing with the cybersecurity. I mean, uh, what they're doing is sometimes it's not directly. They are the people as a government is doing it. Uh, they will have a proxies and then they blame it on the proxies. But the signature is there. You know, you can you can you can trace it back to, uh, you know, some kind of a location in Russia. At the top of that, they have a unique way of avoiding any kind of website or targets that have the Russian language. And, and that's give you another indication that this is coming from Russia. So what is their MO? Uh, they have skills. They, they have a lot of hackers. They have a lot of people who know how to hack in the system. I mean, I'll give you a simple example. They created uh, a false uh, uh, website for the president of Ukraine. And they have a button there saying support the president. If you click on that, you download a virus into your uh, computer and now you are part of their attack. They can go to your social media account and start spreading news about it. And this morning I was reading about uh, uh, Russia. They limited Facebook, uh, you know, in the in the area there. Why? Because they are not they are They're filtering the any kind of false news. So what should we do to prepare just as general citizens? And obviously, you know, our lives are in our devices and in our computers. Uh, you know, be on guard. You know, if uh, if, if something looks uh, you know suspicious, trust your guts about it. Uh, don't uh, click on a link or a text that coming to you. You don't know anything about it. Uh, attachment from uh, an email that you have some kind of suspicion about it. Uh, the biggest tool for something like this one is uh, what we call phishing, which is sent from well-known places, uh, a bank, uh, you know, a retailer or an organization you are working with. And then you look at it and it's off. If, if you think it's off, just talk to them directly. Go to their website. Just just be careful about it. Anything else that that we need to know? Is there anything that we can do, you know, hardware wise, software wise to protect ourselves? Uh, the uh, the systems we have here in the United States when we're talking about uh, about the software and the hardware, the advice number one I give it to anybody is make sure that your smartphone is up to date when it comes to the patches or the update. Just make sure the operating system is up to date because the companies like Apple and Google and their companies they know that we are in the middle of this you know challenge, so uh, they're monitoring what's going on. Uh, the same thing goes with the uh, with the software, the Windows. Make sure you have the latest one and have an antivirus and you have the Windows Defender, for example, or if you have a firewall, that's going to be way much better. Uh, Up-to-date systems will help a lot. 
All right. Any other advice as we uh, continue to deal with this threat? Uh, it's uh, the threat is being going for years. It's not like something which is um, new for for us. It's a matter of now it is under the microscope because we know what's going on on the other side of the Atlantic. So uh, the government is ready. I mean, they have their they 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 inform everybody and they're communicating with the private sector for us as citizens here uh, we have we have to be careful about any suspicious uh, requests emails uh, communications coming from you know from places that we never know about it or places we have problem with then you just just stay away from it it's not worth it you're going to be part of okay. the attack if you download it all right. So we all have to remind our parents of this. I've already had to talk my parents through this several times. Don't click on anything in your email. Absolutely. All right. So Professor Ahmed Benafa with San Jose State, thanks for joining us today on uh, CBS News Bay Area. Thank you.